Okay. Well, welcome to uh, integrating with Einstein Analytics. And uh, the Safe Harbor slide is back, but now it's called Forward Looking Statements. So don't buy any Salesforce stock or products based on anything that I say. Okay, so who am I? Uh, I'm Pat Patterson. I am the community champion at a San Francisco startup called Streamsets. And I've been there about 18 months. Before that, I was a developer evangelist here at Salesforce. So this is my eighth Dreamforce that I've spoken at. So um, what I'm going to do today is uh, share with you some of uh, my experience in building uh, integrations with Einstein Analytics. Although I'm the community champion, it's a startup, so I have to turn my hand to a lot of things. When I started and they discovered that I had worked at Salesforce, they were like, we have customers wanting Salesforce integration. Go write it. So I'm going to be covering some of the basics of Einstein Analytics, just basically doing a level set on some of the uh, terminology. And then really I'm going to be, the meat of the session is in integrating with analytics via the API. So um, how to get data out via SACL and the REST API, how to get data in via the external data API. And I've got a little bonus in there as well. And then uh, at the end, I'm going to be talking about how you can like, put a little bow on your integration by creating uh, an application to actually um, bring your uh, assets together for the user. And the use case I'm going to be uh, working around is very simple. It's basically uh, transaction analysis. So if you imagine I'm working with this data set, and it's actually it's a well-known um, public data set. It's New York City uh, taxi rides. So it's a nice one to work with because there are timestamps in there. There are uh, dollar amounts. So for every ride, I've got like the pickup and drop off a uh, timestamp. I've got the, the fare, the amount of tip, the total. Um, and I've also augmented this data set with some credit card information. So I've got um, uh, the uh, credit card issuer. And we're going to be pushing that into Einstein Analytics. So you can imagine you might have a use case where you're pushing data in periodically. You want to have uh, current data on a continual basis. And working with a dashboard showing some KPIs, so some of those um, key performance indicators so we can monitor uh, the situation, our, our business use case. So who here has used Einstein Analytics already? A few. OK, so, so this will be useful information for ab about half the room, I guess. So. Um, no surprise is the core of Einstein Analytics is a data set. Now, um, data sets are quite interesting. They are uh, optimized for exploring interactively through the UI. And what you'll notice is that when you upload data, um, it's denormalized. You get extra columns in your data set. So you upload uh, data with timestamps, and you'll see that you get extra columns for things like the I think like the month number and the quarter number and things like that. So the um, priority here in the platform is to make the data uh, interactive and allow you to explore it very, very quickly, very high performance. Now, um, it's highly compressed. When we work with big data, instead of storing data row by row, we tend to store it um, in columns. So that means you can get very good compression ratios because you're, you've got a lot of data that's very similar, very close together. And it also means we can do very fast scans to do things like run down all the data in one column and get min, max, and average, and so on. Now, you can create these from a variety of sources. Um, you can pull your uh, Salesforce data in. Um, I'm going to be looking more at external sources, and in particular, pulling data in via the API. And if I just quickly go to uh, my org, I've got the nice uh, the switch over time here. Um, so I've got some data sets here. And what you'll notice is that you can 
go into this kind of edit view for a data set, but you can't actually directly view a data set. If you click on it, you're straight into a lens and the big, big blue bar, and the closest you can really come is in going into this table mode, and I can see um, I've got my data here, I've got pickup time, and this is the denormalization I was talking about. 2013 has been pulled out of that timestamp, even though all I put in was the pickup date time. So I've got year, quarter, month, all of that. So that just makes it uh, efficient for querying later. And I've got different kinds of uh, columns here. There's three different kinds. There's date, which encompasses timestamp. So I've got those in my pickup date time. Uh, there are measures. So that would be like the uh, currency amounts. So those are the um, numbers that you can manipulate and do things like averages and totals. And then you have dimensions. Uh, I don't see one there. Um, let's uh, have a look here. I could put in credit card type. So I should have, I've got credit card type, Visa, MasterCard, and so on. So dimensions tend to be uh, string data that are like your categories uh, grouping. All right. So there's, that's, that's the data that uh, Einstein Analytics is storing for you. Um, the kind of the next concept I'm going to cover is a data flow. Okay, so you can upload a data set through CSV, you can pull in your Salesforce data, you can push it in through the API, or you can use a data flow to build a new data set from existing data. Um, you can apply a whole bunch of different translate, transformations. You can get really creative here. The one in the screenshot just appends a bunch of similar data sets together, but if you, um, Anybody here done the trailhead module on uh, building analytics applications? Okay, so that's a really nice one. And what you'll see is you uh, get a data flow here, and we're extracting users and accounts and joining them. So on uh, the uh, IDs, the record IDs, pulling in opportunities, joining those in. So we kind of build up this really quite complex data flow to end up with um, this opportunity, opportunity line item price book entry products. We're joining up together a whole bunch of data there. So data flows, data flows um, have the interactive UI. Uh, that's how most people uh, interact with them but they also have JSON definitions. And that's really useful if we're doing a programmatic uh, integration, having that ability to actually generate um, a data flow. And we can manage them via the UI, we can start, stop, monitor them, and so on. And there's, there is actually um, an internal API that I'll be talking about later um, to list them out and to um, manipulate them and actually start a data flow programmatically so that's not in the, um, uh, the published API. This is always where Skip squirms because I'm talking about undocumented features. So, so our most basic uh, UI is uh, the lens. So the lens lets us actually look at the data. And you remember a couple of minutes ago, I clicked on that data set and it immediately just took me into a lens to view the data. And um, lenses are really nice because they're really oriented towards interacting with the data and starting to uh, flip it around and explore. And um, let's, get, let's get a lens on some existing data. If I go over back over to this one over here, um, I can just, just say, okay, let's go back to the big blue bar, everybody's first view of analytics. So I can start to explore. I can say, okay, I want to group by that credit card type so that um, I can see how many Visa, how many MasterCards. I don't really like having this not applicable bar here, or all the cash transactions. So I can add a filter and I can filter by uh, payment type down here somewhere and say, okay, just show me the card transactions. And that immediately just takes that away and I can say, okay, well, um, 
if I could remember where it is because it moves around. There we go, sort uh, descending, so I can have the most important data at the top. And I can really kind of start to manipulate this and get a good view of it. Now, the thing that you might not have noticed is this little button here actually shows you the underlying uh, code that underpins this lens. So every lens is just a SACL query. Um, and this is pulling data from that data set, filtering it by the payment type. And you can see those steps that I did in the UI are reflected in the lines in this like, little workflow. And we'll return to that uh, in a minute or two. So lenses are great for exploring data. And um, they're the basis for building like the next step up, which is the dashboard. And dashboards are really where everything comes together. They uh, let you build these, um, uh, I don't know, there isn't really another word. <laughs> they let you, let you build a dashboard. They let you build a view into your data to bring a bunch of data together. So here I've got uh, you know, a pie chart with the numbers of different transactions for credit card types. I've got uh, the bar graph for the average total amount, so I can see if people with one credit card type tend to spend more than another, and I've got a table with the raw data. And you can really go to town on meeting your users' uh, requirements for showing them the data graphically. Okay, so those are the basics. Uh, let's have a look at actually driving uh, Einstein analytics through the API. So how many people in the room would class themselves as developers? Okay, so most people are going to be comfortable with semicolons and curly braces and, and everything else. Okay, everybody else, you might want to shield your eyes. So um, I think probably most of us in the room, well, I don't know, it's day three of Dreamforce. All of us in the room in the developer zone should be familiar with SOCL, the Salesforce Object Query Language. So SACL is the Salesforce Analytics Query Language, and it's really a very, very different beast, although it's got a very similar name. So this is how we access the data in these data sets. And as we just saw, it's actually used internally in lenses um, and by extension in dashboards to actually pull that data together. But you can um, submit SACL queries via API and just pull that data out. Now, it turns out that the view I just showed you in um, but kind of behind that lens is a great way of experimenting with SACL because I've got my results set down here and I can start playing around here. So it says there's a limit of 2,000 down here. Oh, this has gone a little bit weird. So I could change that. I could say, okay, limit it to three. And we should see that change down there. I could say, um, set the payment type to, I could just take that line out, take the filter out. And we should see those not applicables come back. So I can interactively uh, play with SACL. I can, I can generate a query. I can make this lens that looks like the data that I, I need and then start to manipulate it and see, uh, use that as a starting point for exploring in a more textual basis. But I can also um, run SACL through the REST API. So who's, who's familiar with this workbench tool? OK, that's great. We've been telling it, well, we. Salesforce has been telling people about it for years, and it's just, just a great tool. Oh, is it going to go into the right org now? Oh, no, hang on. Bear with me a second. I just, uh, it's a great tool when it doesn't time out between setting things up and just showing them. So let me just get it back. Okay, I think we're going to be in the right org this time. I've got two orgs. So if it comes up in the wrong one, it's kind of game over, player one. Okay, so let's get, uh, let's list our, uh, actually, let's come back to that in a minute because uh, I want to talk about something else first. We'll come back and, and look, at the, uh, look at the REST API right now. So we have, uh, we have the UI. And we have this analytics REST API 
that's um, our way of manipulating these assets. Okay, so we can um, get, delete um, data sets, we can list them out, and we can actually run those SACL queries. So if you kind of squint hard, you can see that uh, you know, within that bit of JSON is one of those SACL queries. And unfortunately, you can't like, list it out line by line. You have to run it all together. But it does work. So let's, uh, let's go back to our example and uh, ch -ch 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 list out the data sets. So because I can't type and talk at the same time, I've got my cheat sheet. So I can list out my data sets. So I've got 32. Uh, I can go to this tester one. I can get all the information on the, on the data set. So what I'm going to do is if I want to actually um, query a data set, I need the current version ID. So that's, that's something, that's like a little gotcha. And when you do any of these queries, you've got to have, and it's like uh, fluid data, you've got to have the very latest um, version ID. OK, so now let's run a SACL query. So I've got to post the data, and I've got to post it to the query endpoint. And let's grab the query. And hopefully, yeah, we've got some results. Now, this is really nice. We get metadata that tells us about the, um, uh, the data we're getting back. So we've got a query here that says, OK, generate the total amount as total. I'm aliasing the fields here, the tip amount, the pickup date time, ordering it by total, and so on. So I'm basically getting the top 10 highest uh, transactions by total amount. And this tells me that these are numeric fields. And then in the actual query results, it's going to show me, like, there's my top one. I've got a bunch of duplicates in here. But there's, there's a transaction that's a bit less. So this is really nice. I can pull this data out. One thing to be aware of is um, you can get up to 10,000 um, uh, results this way, OK? You can't, like, literally pull out your 100 million um, uh, record data set, but you can get, you can get 10,000 results out of uh, SACL this way. And similarly, I can do a little bit more sophisticated query here. So this is literally that last one that I was playing around with, um, getting those credit card types. So I can d just execute arbitrarily complex queries. And again, here I should see Visa, MasterCard, and so on. So super, super useful, uh, the REST API. So that's how we get data out of analytics programmatically. Um, we use the external data API to push data into Einstein Analytics. So who in the room has used the bulk API? A few. OK. So the external data API is another asynchronous API. It's built along similar lines as the bulk API. Although, rather than using uh, jobs and uh, I think it's jobs and batches and so on, it actually uses S objects. So what you'll find yourself doing is creating um, an S object that represents the data set, um, creating child S objects. So we've got insights external data, insights external data part. So you create these child objects, these data parts, and um, upload your data in chunks, OK? And then once you're done uploading those, you set uh, the action field on the parent object, uh, Insights External Data, to tell it to start processing the job. And then you can periodically query that same uh, record to see what's going on. So this is actually easier to show you um, in code. And then I'll show you it in action. So this is actually production code. This is our uh, product, StreamSets Data Collector, that can push data into, um, into Einstein Analytics. Whoops, no, it's not. PowerPoint gets me every time. When you alt-tab away, it just, uh, just leaves it. OK, can we do? Uh, OK, hopefully you can see that at the back. Um, 
projectors made this, the font a little on the small size. But hopefully you can see that basically what I'm doing when I want to create one of these data sets, I'm just creating an S object um, and giving it a name and so on, saying it's going to be CSV data, saving it to Salesforce. And then I do a bunch of this. I create CSV data. So this is where I'm basically building CSV formatted data. And then say, OK, I want another S object. This is the part. Um, I set its ID to the parent. And here's the data that's going to be in base64. And I can loop around uploading multiple parts. And then when all my data there is there, I just close the data set by setting the action field to process. So I've got that data set ID. And then I can monitor it down here in this loop, basically until the status um, is, is complete. So let's actually show this in action. So here is uh, StreamSets Data Collector. So what I'm doing is here is I'm going to read some CSV data from local disk. And I'm actually computing the credit card type based on the credit card number. So this is where all that Visa, MasterCard stuff comes from. And then I'm masking the card number because we don't need credit card numbers going into Einstein Analytics. Um, that, that's not good practice. And then I'm sending it to uh, Einstein Analytics using my uh, Salesforce credentials there. So if we quickly run this. So what we should see, it'll, pat, it'll process in batches of 1,000 records. So it'll whip through the 5,000 and something. And if I quickly go to my transaction log, this is actually my, my application log. I can see it's creating all these parts. This is, this is like the debug. And then after a few seconds, it will actually close the data set. And um, over here, in the data manager, see, we've got, now we've got that uh, upload running. So it's pushed the data into, um, uh, into Einstein Analytics. And if we just refresh, so it took uh, 22 seconds for that to ingest. And if we go over uh, to over here somewhere, and then uh, Unfortunately, like, so one of my, my beefs with the Analytics Studio is that it's not really expecting things to change this quickly, so you have to refresh the whole page. But there, 12.52, and there's my, uh, there's my new data I just pushed in via the API, API there. OK, so we can get data into, uh, into Einstein Analytics. This is really cool. We can actually upload um, external data and do integrations. Um, but how do we build those, bear with me, there we go. How do we build uh, new data sets? How do we run data flows? So we could go in and build one manually and you know, set it running or schedule it. Um, but it turns out that there is um, this Insights internal API that um, is used in an open source tool that's out on GitHub called Analytics Cloud Dataset Utils. This is really, really useful. This lets you uh, list out the data flows, which is not in a public API. It lets you uh, modify them, so change that JSON, and uh, even kick one off programmatically. Um, it's a pretty easy to use REST interface. I'll show you it in a second. I would say use at your own risk. It's not an officially supported part of uh, the Salesforce APIs. Hopefully, it will be replaced by an official API in the next, I don't know how many releases. Ask Skip, this gentleman here. Um, but until then, it's an it's a essential tool for doing really deep integrations with Einstein Analytics. So um, let's have a look at that in action. So I can. Again, just pull out some, uh, some URLs here and say, OK, let's get the list of uh, workflows in this org. So I can see there's three of them. I can kind of drill down there. I can pull out the JSON 
representing that workflow. So it's actually easier to see in the raw response, but there we can see there's a bunch of extracts. Uh, if we say drill down, we can say workflow definition. So we can see there's a bunch of extracts. They all get appended together. Uh, there's all the sources. And then the result gets registered as the tester uh, data set. So, so this is really nice. We can actually um, get that and uh, put it. And the, what I really like is we can start the workflow as well. So if we do, uh, I believe it's a put. Yeah, if we do a put, I usually just send empty brackets um, to the, the start endpoint. What we should get back is success true. And then again, we go here to the monitor. And we just started that default Salesforce workflow uh, running programmatically through the API. So really, really, uh, really, really useful stuff. OK, the benefits of my spelunking around uh, GitHub. OK, so we have um, data in Einstein Analytics. We could obviously just upload data sets and let the user um, explore them, let them build their own lenses, their own um, dashboards, and so on. But um, we can create analytics applications. And an analytics app, in, in the great tradition of Salesforce, you know, a Salesforce um, uh, platform application, a force.com application, is really just a collection of tabs and S objects and um, visual force and so on. An analytics app is really just a collection of the other assets. So lenses, dashboards, data sets, et cetera. Salesforce provide a couple that you might have already seen, the sales analytics app and the service analytics app. Uh, but you can create your own. So um, I've created uh, this application that just brings together several views of that data. So if I go over here and say, OK, let's go back to the studio and look at my apps. I've got this master application where I have brought together um, my da taxi dashboard. And um, so I've got like three transactions in this data set, like a very basic one. And I'm showing some uh, tabular data there. So we can bring together in this packaged form all of these data sets and start sharing them with users. And where this really starts to shine is um, where you uh, want to stamp out similar applications. Maybe you want to work with different data sets. Maybe you want to work with different um, Salesforce standard objects. You can go away. Whoops. You can make your application into a template and start stamping out uh, new applications. So this is really, um, this would be a session in itself. You can go very, very deep with uh, templates. So I'm not going to go uh, super deep here, especially as I've only got 10 minutes left. Um, but you can put all of these dashboards, lenses, data sets, work, data flows into a template and then cookie cutter out applications. So this might be um, distributing them the, within your company. It might be distributing them on the app exchange. And you can uh, put uh, parameters into them so that the, in the same way if you've used the sales uh, analytics application, you get to choose um, at the beginning, how much data you want to bring in, you can let your users cho choose between different uh, options. There are some gotchas when you're working with these templates. And again, here's some of the benefits of my experience. You've got to use the workbench and either the force.com IDE, that's the Eclipse thing, or the force.com migration tool, that's Ant. Um, because you're accessing these assets via the metadata API. This hopefully will evolve and become a little bit more easy to use. Uh, Skip has written a utility that really helps with this. Um, 
kind of alleviates some of the pain. Uh, and what it, what it does is it gives you uh, a view into the assets in your org. So this is a, a custom Visual Force page that uh, Skip Sauls, the, the product manager for Analytics Platform, wrote. And I can kind of look through the lenses and so on and into my app template and actually look at this JSON. And I can start changing things and even um, upload new versions. So this is a really, really useful tool. I think Skip's uh, blogged it, certainly tweeted it, um, uh, the uh, install URL. And I think I've got it on, on my last slide. Now, again, a couple of bits of my experience. Um, you cannot include external data sets in your template. OK, I tried to do this. And it failed, and I was wrestling with it for an entire morning. You get this cryptic edge mark data null not found. Um, and you just can't do it, because if you think about it, you're uploading data through API. How's, uh, how can you put that into a template to stamp out for other people? You know, do, do you copy those potentially hundreds of millions of records into the template? Um, what do you do? So what I found is you can create a dummy data set from CSV and just include that in the template. So that was my like three records that I had in my app. Um, distribute that and then replace it at runtime. So if you've got an integration that's going to be pushing new data in, you can still wrap up your lens and dashboard just some, just some handful of records in CSV just to show people how it's supposed to look. And then they actually kick things off at runtime, pushing data in to get the real, the real view. And then uh, similarly to force.com, you can package your application and then put it in the app exchange. Now, another piece of my experience is when you do this, only select the wave template. It's really tempting to select the master app and the data flow and the data sets. But if you do that, it'll package. But then you'll get errors when you try to install. All you need is just that wave template, the, that single thing that I've got, I've got there. And then test. Test it on different orgs. Test it on different editions. Um, like I say, you can package it up, and the packaging will seem like it worked. But then when you try to install, like, there could be a, just a little wrinkle that throws it off. And in fact, I've got about one minute. I can, uh, I can show you like the packaged application. So what I did was I wrapped those, that dashboard into an app. I installed it into a second org. So this is, this is my created in another org app. And if I go into here, this is now looking at the live data. So I've got 24,000 records here. And again, I can go into another pipeline, uh, make sure it's reset, and push the data in. So the nice thing here is I'll just push another 5,000 records in. What I should see is that data reflected in, in, the, um, in the dashboard. So we go back to the dashboard. OK, we've got 24,000 records. Let's have a little look at the monitor. So we've got the upload is running. So the upload was successful. We should have the data flow run. OK, so that was the upload, created data set. This is the data flow that's going to be appending all my data up till now together into one like master data set. So it's running. Takes about 10 seconds, 14 seconds. So then back to here. So we had 24,000, refresh the page, and now we've got 26,000. So we now have a live dashboard that's being updated from an external application, and the users have uh, up to the minute data. So with that, I believe, OK, so it's going to kill me, that thing. Um, Einstein Analytics, it's tempting to think of it as um, a SaaS application, like, just like Sales Cloud, but it's really a platform, uh, like what we used to call force.com. It's a platform that third parties can use to uh, innovate and build, uh, build products and applications. There are some rough edges. Um, 
the, you know, having to work with Workbench and the force.com IDE is a little bit on the clunky side, but it's evolving quickly. And you can see from release to release, uh, there's more there. I, the, the biggest piece of uh, advice I'd give you if you're working with uh, the templates and building applications, just read the documentation really uh, carefully. It's so easy to skip past a paragraph because you're excited and you're building your thing and then it stops working and then you go back and you read it and you think, oh, I didn't even see that uh, five minutes ago. So just, just be really careful and methodical in stepping through. And so there's a bunch of resources and I've got three or four minutes left for questions. So I'll leave the resources slide up and yeah, let's have some uh, questions. Stunned you all, yeah. Oh, do you want to use the mic? Actually, then it'll get uh, recorded. You mentioned using S object for the integration. Yeah. What if I want to go from Heroku? Oh, it's a good question. If you want to go from Heroku, um, I believe there's a mechanism for reading data from Heroku. Skip. Yeah, this connection is actually for Okay. Okay. Okay, so, so Skip, just for the, the people who are not nearby, Skip is saying there's connectors available for reading from various uh, locations. So Heroku, Postgres would be one of those. Yeah. Yeah. What, ad what, advantage, we, what advantage we are getting using the analytics tool versus the other tools available in the market? We can still connect using the Salesforce connector and do all those things. So is there any... Extra advantage we are getting using the Analytics Studio? Um, I'm, I, okay, so I'm not on the Analytics team, so I can't give you a great competitive breakdown. I would say it's very, it dovetails very well into the existing Salesforce data. So if you're bringing data in that augments that, so if you imagine I, if I had an account ID on each of those transactions, that's, that's really, I think, it's unique uh, selling point is that level of integration and building um, building external data together with uh, with internal. Okay, so do we have to get any kind of license, or it's just uh, your like Workbench, Analytics, or Salesforce? Or I was doing that in a developer edition. If you go through the Trailhead uh, module, you'll get a uh, there's a URL there that you can create a developer edition with Wave enabled. So that's okay. what I always use. So you don't need any additional license or anything to get that? No. no. Okay. No. No. All right, thank you. Just do the, do the trailhead module. Okay, thank you. Okay. Well, thank you very much. <laughs>